What Ayn Rand does is she challenges that moral code. I think that's a great contribution. Ayn Rand says, the moral code says that I should live for other people, but not just help other people, not just make other people better off, because business does that the best. What the moral code actually says, the modern moral code of the last 2,000 years at least, says is that I should suffer for other people. I should sacrifice myself for other people. I should make myself worse off for other people. And she asks a simple question. Why? Why should anybody live like that for somebody else? Because it's written in a book? Because some philosopher told us? But, how, but what is his reasoning? And there is no answer for the why other than we have decided. We have accepted. Maybe, maybe there is an answer in a, in a way that this is a more difficult sacrifice as compared to being an entrepreneur and having a nice life, uh, being Bill Gates, than compared to dying for other people. Right? So, people so might... but why is dying for other people a good? Why in morality do we view that as good? Not that that is good, but that everyone recognizes that that's harder than the alternative. So is a lot of things in life are hard. Yeah, Do we... that seems to be the hardest. Basically, four feet. Yeah, but why is why is morality about what's hard? What is it about morality which says the good versus evil, good versus bad? This is what you should do versus this is what you shouldn't do. Why should you do what's hard? What is the value of hardness? For whom is the value of hardness? There are many several explanations, but I would take also into consideration religions, for example, that all the great prophets or let's say people have sacrificed for other good for other people. They suffer that we live today. Yeah. So that's maybe source of such morality. Yo, there's no question that the source of the morality is religion. Ultimately, Christ dies the most horrific death possible. For whom? Yes, for sins not he committed, for sins all of us committed. For somebody else's sins, he dies. Right? So the source is ultimately religion. But it still begs the question of why? And Red would argue, I would argue, that there is no logical, rational, reality-based reason. That at the end of the day, what morality should be is what Aristotle viewed morality as. Morality for Aristotle was not about how to suffer for other people, it was not how to sacrifice yourself, it was not how to inflict, to, to do something hard for the sake of doing something hard. Morality for Aristotle was a guide to how to live, how to live the best life you could live, how to achieve what he called eudaimonia which is, I know I'm butchering the, 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 you know, how I'm pronouncing it, but it meant happiness, flourishing, living a full life as a human being, living the best life that you could for you. And Rand comes to the same conclusion, morality. It's not about other people. Morality starts with a fundamental question. How should I live? Because Human beings, completely different than other animals, we don't know how to live. Other animals have it genetically coded. They know exactly what to do, they know when to do it, how to do it. We don't say that's immoral to an animal because they have no choice. They're programmed, they're coded. We're not. We have the ability to choose. We have the ability to guide our lives. And we don't know what's good for us. I mean, we still don't know even materially what's good for us. We don't know what food to eat. I mean, it depends which doctor, which nutritionist you talk to, right? Is fat good for us or is it fat bad for us? I'm on the good for us this month. I don't know about next month. I'll read another study and I'll convince me the other way around, right? Even at the level of our material survival, it's com so complicated that we are not sure what to eat and what not to eat. But what about... Spiritually, what about in terms of ideas, what in, in terms of action, in terms of what we should do on a day-to-day -day basis? What leads to goodness and what leads to bad? 
What is going to result in a flourishing, successful life, and what is going to result in a horrible, awful life? And so that is the fundamental choice that we have, is to live or not to live. And if we're going to live, how are we going to live? Morality should be, ethics should be, a science. In Aristotle's sense, of figuring out what are the actions, what are the values and virtues that we should adopt that lead to a successful, flourishing, prosperous, successful life as a human being. And that's the project Rand engages in. And she proposes some ideas, right? What's the, what's the most important thing we should be pursuing as human beings in order to live a successful life? What is it that makes everything around us possible? What is it that makes entrepreneurs possible? Freedom. Freedom is a consequence. Well, before freedom, freedom to do what? The right to do it. Well, no, it's the ability to think. It's our ability to use our mind. You have the right to do it. Yes, you have to have the right to do it, but that's politics. That's way downstream from morality. You have to start with what makes it possible for us as individuals to live. And what makes it possible for us as individuals to live is our capacity to reason. Our capacity to know the world, to know reality, and then to apply reason, to rearrange it for our benefit. To figure out the right path in life. All entrepreneurship, I mean, entrepreneurship starts with an idea and with execution, all that requires the application of human reason to a problem. And in that sense, you know, it's not just the thinking, it's then we got to do something with the thinking to be productive. We got to apply the thinking, we got to act on the thinking. So for Ren, for her idea, her idea of morality is an idea of egoism, of self-interest. It's an idea of the purpose of life, the purpose of morality is to help me live the best life I can live, to provide me the principles that will allow me to live the best life I can live for myself. Mm -hmm. Starting with thinking, with reason, acting on that reason to sustain my life, which means productive activity, means being productive. Now she has other virtues that include honesty and, and integrity and others, but those two are key for the discussion we have on entrepreneurs, because what do entrepreneurs do? They're thinkers, they're rational, to the extent that they're successful, they're using reason, they're observing reality, they're integrating the facts, they're coming up with new ideas, they have to think for themselves. If they just copy other people, they're not going to make a lot of money. They're not going to be successful. They're not going to build successful businesses. They can only build successful businesses by coming up with original ideas that are theirs. And then they're productive. They take those ideas and manifest them in reality and execute and build and create. For when, by definition, they are moral. They're the good guys. They're the mother traces. They're the ones who should be sainted. They're the ones who are ultimately the benefactors of mankind. For the culture, they're suspicious because they're self-interested. Now, what do we know about self-interest? What have we been taught, again, since we were this book, small, about self-interest? It's bad. It's a sin. It's a sin. And what behavior is it associated with? What do we associate with self-interest? They live at the cost of others, absolutely. They lie, steal, cheat, they exploit, they take advantage of people, they'll do anything to get their way. And they don't trade with others, they exploit others, they take advantage of others. They don't sacrifice for other people, they expect other people to sacrifice for them. Now, if that, now think of that, that's the bucket, the fire, you know, in our mind we have fire folders. The fire that has on it selfish or self-interested or egoist says lying, cheating, stealing, living at the expense of others. Then we have a file called businessman or entrepreneurs. And in that file it says egoist, self-interested. Which means lying, cheating, stealing, living at the expense of others. Now what do we do to people that we think are going to lie, steal, and cheat and going to live at the expense of others? Well, we want to control them. 
We want to make sure, we want to catch them. We want to, we have to regulate them. We have to look over their shoulders. We have to know everything that they do because we know they're going to be cheating. They're going to be lying. They're going to be stealing. Everybody remember uh, Fox News used to have this guy called Bill O'Reilly. You remember Bill O'Reilly is pretty famous internationally. He was an obnoxious interviewer. So I remember in 2002, I was on his show and he wanted to fire every CEO in America. Why? Because there were a few crooks that were caught. You remember Enron and WorldCom, there were a few of these scandals. And he said, well, of course, he said, all CEOs are crooks because they're all self-interested. And we should fire them all preemptively. We know they're crooks, just fire them. And everybody, yay. Because that's, we're conditioned to that. That we associate business, entrepreneur, with self-interest. We associate self-interest with lying, stealing, cheating. That's what you get. We have to, because we know, we know. That if we don't have food inspectors, McDonald's is gonna poison us. We know that if we don't have elevator inspectors, all those elevators are gonna drop and kill us. Because we know that they live by exploiting other people. And as much as we teach people about the economics, we teach people about trade, we teach people about win-win transactions, we can't get underneath, which is where the ethics are, which is where morality is, where they don't trust. They don't trust the system, they don't trust the people, they don't trust the entrepreneur, because it's unethical, because we were taught since we were very little that it's a sin. So I would argue to, all of us in the kind of a free market world trying to change the world, mm -hmm. then we're gonna have to challenge these ethical beliefs to get anywhere. It's not enough to do the economics and the politics. We also have to challenge these beliefs about morality, these beliefs about self-interest, if we're going to be successful. We have to start with that. The world, the world today presents us with two alternatives in morality. You can either sacrifice, suffer, that live for others, or you could be a lying, cheating, stealing SOB. <laughs> I suggest there's a third alternative. And that is that you're a rational, productive egoist who is focused on his own happiness, but doing so by producing, by creating, by building, and by making the world a better place. Not because that's your intention, but because that's the outcome. Because nobody will trade with you otherwise. Because trade is a win-win. And the more we maximize trade, the more everybody wins. Mm -hmm. And then that's what egoists do. And I think if we can change that moral paradigm, then our view of entrepreneurs, and our view of capitalism, and our view of freedom will shift as well. Thank you. It takes time. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, Please take this opportunity, go to yourronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...